Given that I write books on Christian monasticism, I really like this canto because it is about the kind of monks Dante thinks of as contemplatives. The word contemplatives here needs to be contrasted with the other kinds of monks that Dante talks about in Paradise, such as the Benedictines of the next canto and the Dominicans and Franciscans whom he's already encountered. For Dante, these contemplatives include the monks known as Carthusians and the Camaldolese, for example. In the Middle Ages, and especially in Dante's time around the year 1300, monks were part of everyone's life. Though I was a grown adult before I met a monk, a 14th century medieval person would meet monks with some regularity, for there were thousands of monasteries all over Europe. It was even likely that one of your friends joined a monastery. As well, monasteries ran schools, hospitals, and sponsored a lot of the local life for villagers, such as the annual fairs that celebrated important saints, and they even provided employment for many people on their large estates. Just like you might say today, my dad works for Apple, a medieval teenager might have said, my dad works for the monks at Fountains Abbey. It certainly was a different world. And monks were not only an important element of medieval life, but they were thought of as particularly holy and held in high esteem. Monks had given up everything worldly in order to go and live in monasteries. So medieval Christians thought that they were worthy of admiration and respect. It is not surprising that Dante would have monks in paradise. But it is crucial that we bear in mind, however, that not all monks were holy, and even the institution of monasticism needed to be reformed from time to time. And this is why Dante meets a monk named Peter Damien in this canto. Peter Damien lived in the 11th century and became a monk at a monastery in northern Italy, not far from Florence, called Fonte Avellana. Peter wrote many letters, even some to popes, denouncing the church's bad practices, including those monks who did not follow the monastic way of life very well. He dedicated his life to being a reformer of monasticism. But there are two interesting things to note from this canto before we even get to meet Peter Damien. First, the way that Dante looks at Beatrice, his guide. And second, the contemplatives that he sees are climbing a ladder. Contemplative monks are called contemplatives because their main occupation in life is to think upon and consider God. They do this not only with their eyes by looking at artistic images of God, for example, but also using their minds, letting their thoughts move beyond the things of this world to reflect on, to contemplate the one who made this world. For contemplatives, they use the things of the world as a way to think about God. Throughout the Divine Comedy, Beatrice serves not only as a guide for Dante after Virgil's departure, but also as a reflection of God. Thus, to see Beatrice as one who is created is, to some degree, to see God, as he is the creator. Listen to Dante's words. Upon my lady's countenance once more I'd fix my eyes, and with my eyes, my soul, and every other thought was swept aside. Let your mind follow fast what you behold, says Beatrice. Make your eyes into mirrors for the sign that in this mirror will appear to you. You see, contemplative monks look at earthly things and through them see God. And by the way, let us also notice the way in which Beatrice sees Dante not through her own vision, but through the eyes of God, if you will. Dante writes, She who saw my silent will through the sight of the one all-seeing. Yet Dante takes his eyes away from Beatrice in this canto. He sees a joy tipped the other in the scales. So let's see what Dante sees when he looks the other way. I saw a ladder, heavenward, tall extend, its rung so high. My own light could not bring that summit to me. On those rungs descend so many splendors that I thought the sky had spilled its wealth of stars upon this sign. As Dante sees these lights going up and down the ladder, he wants to talk to the one who is nearest to him, but he hesitates. Noticing his reticence, Beatrice grants him permission to speak. But before looking at what is said, let's reflect for a moment on the imagery of the ladder upon which the contemplatives climb. The genesis of the ladder image for the contemplative life goes back to the book of Genesis. Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, lays on the ground to sleep. Using rocks for pillows, he falls asleep. He falls asleep and, we're told, he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Thus, throughout the rest of Christian history, this image of a ladder with angels ascending and descending on it becomes an image of those Dante calls contemplatives because they spend their days contemplating God, metaphorically ascending a ladder from earth to heaven to contemplate God's glory. This becomes such a common way of thinking about the contemplative life that Christian spiritual writers titled their books things like The Ladder of Divine Ascent and The Ladder of Divine Perfection. 
Thus, light and ladder imagery become associated with contemplatives, and Dante makes use of this traditional imagery. Returning to Canto 21, the sacred lamp that Dante speaks to is Peter Damien. Damien has come down to Dante to tell him about the corruption found in monasteries. In fact, even Peter Damien's former monastery has grown cold with decadence. He says, quote, That cloister used to render a rich yield to heaven, now a barren, dry terrain, as shall before much longer be revealed. Now, there would be little point to this conversation if it were not for the fact that monasteries were so important in medieval life. Every reader of Dante should care about the corruption of the monastic life because it is a warning even to us today, even if we do not have as many monasteries, that things that start out well, things that appear to be greatly blessed by God, can in time lose their original fervency and become pale images of what they used to be. And this way, Canto 21 of Paradise is a warning. But there is a positive message in this canto as well. That is that God raises up women and men to be like Peter Damien. That is, to use their voice for good in reforming Christian institutions, including the church. And this is what makes this canto so appropriate to paradise. The reminder that it is only by the light of God that all Christians and all Christian institutions can ascend the ladder to the presence of God. In this way, Canto 21 brings a message of hope.